We don't need this transitional uh, moments, <laughs> so we're probably no music for me. Come on, <laughs> <laughs> no, music, no music for Leila. But I'm sure you that everyone are going to be really uh, eager to hear what you have to say. So Leila is an agile coach, practitioner, and trainer. She's a passionate about helping teams achieve their highest potential in creating valuable products and services, and at the same time having engaged and motivated team members. Background in engineering and strong hands-on experience of leading teams, large and complex projects, business process optimization, as well as organizational transformation within an international environment. She's currently working as an agile coach in Raiffeisen Bank International, where she has a unique opportunity to support people, teams, and the whole organization on their agile journey. So retrospective is the highlight of our conference and, and in agile project management, a key factor that enables continuous improvement. We already had one presentation today and um, teams rarely take retrospective seriously. They do not use it as a powerful tool, but what it really is. trust between team members and so on. So with all her uh, experience, Leila will talk about how to use retrospectives to create a culture of continuous improvement. She will get to the essence of retrospectives, what is their business value and how to make them more effective and interesting. Um, interesting fact, Leila was one of the first members of PMI BIH chapter and regarding interesting fact and retrospective and Leila and me, she was my high school colleague from the same class. So um, give her your full attention or your moderator is not going to be so nice and kind to you anymore. So Leila, please take the floor and um, let us uh, share with us these retrospective thoughts. Thank you so much, Una. And uh, thanks everyone for having me here. Um, also, please allow me to be a bit emotional. Uh, as Una said, I'm really, really delighted to be uh, today uh, here with you. And I hope you still have some energy to stay in this session. And I know I am uh, between your evening rest and uh, probably a uh, fully booked day, uh, packed day. Um, yes, I actually um, have a lot of, no, I, I see here a lot of known faces from different actually <laughs> areas of my life. And I am really, really um, fully emotional being here and uh, being actually a um, founding board member of PMI chapter in Bosnia and Herzegovina. When we were, it sounds fancy, but we were just, I think, a very enthusiastic group of people. And I'm really happy to see um, how um, great thing you guys achieved. And kudos to all of you who are now members and uh, uh, doing this great stuff. Uh, I'm really, really grateful grateful uh, that you continued and then you evolved in such a great thing and actually having uh, this great international conference um, it is great achievement and I am actually honored to be here and share my experience and also when seeing in, in, in the audience um, my former high school colleagues my university colleagues my colleagues from my previous projects and the teams um, it's really great honor to be here with you as Una said yeah, actually, Una, you forgot we also were um, co-hosting some things together, right, in our previous lives. So, <laughs> so um, yeah, uh, I hope I will manage. I'm actually grateful to have Una uh, support here because um, even though what Lisa shared with us in this 10-12% uh, of people who are not uh, still um, accommodated with this new way of working and uh, living, I'm probably in this then smaller percentage. I, of course, adopted, uh, but I really don't like this online thing. And then I really, really miss face-to-face um, -face communication. But obviously, we managed and it really works. It really works also in, in the retrospective. Um, I will really try to uh, bring some, um, I would say, um, perspective from uh, my uh, work with teams and uh, actually in, uh, transformation in the organizations in really a uh, different environment uh, from the different cultural, having people from different cultures, uh, really international environment, and really uh, trying to um, bring, of course, this theoretical perspective about what retrospectives, what are they, but how we use it and how we actually utilize this powerful tool in achieving continuous improvement. Uh, let me share my screen. I also am not very much advanced um, 
Zoom user, but we tested. But you know, you never know how it works. So I'm really happy that we have these uh, guys here supporting us. But probably you can see my screen now, right? Cool. So you already heard what would be the topic. Uh, and anyway, it's all about this um, retrospecting uh, today. Uh, but in general, I think the, the whole year uh, behind us was very challenging and definitely deserves some sort of uh, reflection and uh, talking back. Yes, I also had to comply with the rules and uh, definitely thank you for uh, to the sponsors from my side because uh, definitely without their support, uh, such great things couldn't be, happen and uh, to have confidence in uh, this on this level, I would say. So yes, before we continue, I hope you have some energy still to do some more exercise <laughs> or work. I uh, really would like to hear your voice. And that's why I told you I don't like this online thing. Uh, if you would be so kind, I posted the link in chat. This is direct link to a uh, Menti question. And if you can share with me, uh, what is the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear word retrospective, which we um, were exposed today a lot, but probably also uh, in your work and in your life, you are actually uh, very much uh, facing that, that, that uh, situations. So I will also uh, share the screen from, from different, um, Oh, okay, people are already. Can you see my screen? Yes, we do. And you see what I'm doing on this? You see Menti now? Uh, no, we still are seeing this third slide of the presentation. Mm -hmm. Okay, then I Leila, will. Leila, you should just again click share screen and then. Yes, yes, I know. I have to switch between between screens. Probably now you are. You see. Perfect. Thank you. Cool. Thanks. Okay. Let's see. What are your tools? Experience, learning, analysis review and improvement. I like this improvement and learning very much. Of course, without analysis, we wouldn't be able to do it. Analisa as well. Introspective. Yes, very much needed, I would say, especially for, uh, yeah, for all of us from any, whatever angle we look at that, but also for us uh, very much doing facilitation and coaching work, quite needed a lot. Do more, flashback. Učenje na greškama, absolutely. Uh, rethinking, retro, reflect, done, okay. Okay. We, we, we collected, let, uh, if I see correctly, about 20 answers 21 some are still uh, coming in yeah i just wanted to hear or to let's say feel your pulse and um, we will be uh, in this short overview that i prepared for you really talking uh, about actually all of these aspects you are mentioning experience learning go back looking back about analysis uh, nostalgia or nostalgia i'm not sure probably if uh, some good things uh, happened and then we are really facing some uh, challenges, which is also normal. Okay, thank you very much. You can obviously continue uh, to contribute with your answers, but I will uh, go back to my uh, presentation mode then. Thanks a lot. I hope you see my new screen again. Yes, we see your presentation. Cool, thanks a lot. Just a second. Okay. So, as we have heard uh, also in, in the morning, uh, or not in the morning, but at the beginning of this conference uh, from Stanislav, also from Lisa, um, it's um, actually very much important that we pause. We as a human, and, and reflect back, we as a humans normally um, are not used to um, stopping and um, looking back and reflecting. We are very much in a hurry in every aspect of our life and also in working environment. 
at least most of us uh, do not have that habit to uh, stop back and, and reflect. So it is really um, in order to learn and in order to uh, improve, it is really important to uh, stop, reflect back and uh, the, um, analyze and make our decisions um, about improvement if it's needed, about changes if they are needed, or actually just be happy uh, what has, uh, about what has been achieved and um, enjoy uh, the results of, of uh, our work or um, our performance. So in order to improve uh, and uh, on the team level or any other level, organizational level of an, or on our personal level, that's why I also love this answer about introspection, uh, is really important to pause and, and look back in order to be able to, to look ahead. I will not talk about the um, definition because it's very much in line what also uh, Stanislav shared. I will, in my talk, uh, really um, use both words. Um, I, I will be alternating between agile retrospective and retrospective because uh, it is true that I am focusing on agile retrospective because um, it's from my perspective of working with agile teams mainly and also in agile environments in, in, in the organizations in this financial uh, world, basically in the banking world. Um, but uh, I strongly believe what you also heard before that retrospective is a so powerful technique and tool that we can use uh, to improve uh, culture in the organ overall organization and it can be utilized in many ways to uh, to, to improve the quality and to improve the um, outcome that we want to achieve and also at the end of the day our business results and to uh, deliver better um, value to um, our customers, our end users, uh, whoever is interested in our work or those for who, whom we are actually um, basically existing uh, regardless of the nature of the product or, or of the work itself. Uh, itself. So basically, we can retro um, on about anything, anything we want. But yeah, mainly I will be focusing, of course, on, on agile teams, because um, retrospective is um, in agile teams, the, the, the event which is happening at the end of each iteration, if we are talking about scrum teams, at the end of the sprint, uh, when a team pauses for a couple of hours, and of course, reflects on their work, um, in the previous iteration or on the specific issue, basically what they decide and what bothers them together to um, retrospect on. And uh, then, of course, to try to uh, fine tune their behavior to adjust their uh, processes and way of working in order to be more effective to uh, deliver better, better results uh, in their work. But actually, uh, looking from the organizational perspective, especially in the big corporate environments and enterprises, it's uh, very often hard to get buy-in. And actually, management, um, senior managers, um, most of the time wonder um, why is it needed for a team to just uh, you know, sit for a couple of hours and play around some games and also play around with post-it notes when we are in, in physical uh, on-site environment or in online world, uh, we have great tools such as Miro you experienced and also many others that we use for uh, supporting us in doing retrospectives and in, in this interactive work. So I really want to discuss uh, what is the value, but also what is the business value, because this is, to, to, to tell the truth, the most important fight for, for the stakeholders and from the um, enterprise perspective. But I really want to uh, look for, um, into the value of Agile retrospective from both angles, from the organizational perspective, but also from the team perspective. So we are talking about uh, agile retrospective on a team level, but also uh, from the organizational perspective, how we are really creating a culture of continuous improvement. Because retro is um, uh, definitely a cornerstone of um, any uh, inspect and adapt uh, life cycle, regardless of um, the methodology we are talking about, right? So if we are uh, even working in, in a completely different uh, environment than Agile, it is still um, uh, applicable, I would say. So, oh, 
I'm having some issues. Sorry for this. We yeah, I would appreciate Dario some kind of help because suddenly I lost my cursor and everything is like frozen or whatever. Hello, Leila. You can stop your presentation and try start it again, please. Yeah, yeah but I, I don't have my actually cursor. Mm -hmm. Do you see it now? Okay, we will share your presentation and we will help. And I can more. share it now because you, you I think, unblocked okay. me. Okay, thank you. Mm, sorry, I apologize for this. Let me try again. Should be okay now, right? We see your presentation now. Okay. So, uh, as I said, from the team, uh, we, 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 I would like to look from uh, for the uh, value of the retrospective from the team and organizational perspective. Uh, it's for the team to uh, really uh, reflect and um, try to improve their work. But uh, what values uh, this um, event or this um, meeting or however we call it uh, brings to the team? It's definitely it shouldn't be boring something, and it definitely serves for um, boosting the team dynamics and team energy. And uh, it's most of, of that, the most important thing, it should be the place where the team feels safe to share their um, openly their thoughts, their problems, their issues, their frustrations. So they really have to um, feel uh, safe uh, in sharing uh, whatever bothers them. And we as an organization, as a leaders, managers, we really want them to share and to be able uh, to feel uh, safe uh, in, in, in sharing there. So this is the uh, one of the tools, how we can achieve that, you know, if done properly, of course, I will touch that topic. Uh, sometimes in a hurry and even in an agile world, there are a lot of these buzzwords, you know, and companies allowing um, a lot of supporting um, elements for, uh, for the teams to be happy and trying to boost their happiness. Sometimes it's really um, a lost in all this uh, work, uh, the, the connection, especially now in online world, and uh, simply teams don't have uh, opportunity to pause. So, and to enjoy, you know, and to, um, to work on their um, relationship and collaboration within the team. Simply team dynamics um, deteriorates in, in, in some, some time. So it's really important. Uh, and this uh, event can be actually um, quite well utilized for that for some sort of team building activities uh, in, in an interesting way, of course. And as I mentioned, since retros are uh, their main purpose is uh, to foster continuous improvement. So definitely um, if we allow teams to pause and if uh, done properly, uh, at the end of the day, uh, team will find, teams will find a way to improve their work and also in work environment and also their processes, uh, they will uh, definitely deliver uh, then uh, better quality uh, results, whatever. If we are talking about software development teams, then for sure we are uh, talking about uh, software product, right? But regardless of that, uh, any kind of service product platform, um, even methodological uh, thing working on, uh, if um, given the opportunity to uh, work on that and improve them, uh, definitely it will lead to um, improving uh, quality of the deliverable, whatever it is. And here I will then switch or touch the point of the organizational perspective where we then um, indirectly impact the, the value uh, of customer, increasing the customer value and, uh, and, and actually um, overall business benefits uh, will be improved. What I like actually the most, uh, from about the retros is that they empower teams. So uh, if yeah done properly, not most of the time, but um, retros are really also powerful tool to uh, make teams accountable. So give them opportunity to um, um, own their decisions and uh, own their also results. And of course, uh, if all this is in place, they can serve as a um, fantastic tool for communication with, with the management. 
uh, if these elements with what I mentioned before are present and uh, exercised, uh, then the results of red, red row, if read properly, if there is openness, or on, of course, on management side to uh, listen to that elements, then they can for sure uh, be used for the uh, improvement and also tackling the problems such as such Lisa mentioned uh, with the lady, uh, Isabel, if I'm not mistaken, who left the company. Yeah, if, if the lady was heard properly, probably, uh, the, and the management actually was able to or was uh, open to hear, uh, they would tackle it differently. There are different uh, components, which I will try to uh, summarize uh, shortly um, afterwards, but I would really like to stress here the one which I find from my work very important for, for retrospectives. So it is really on the team uh, to decide, or that group of people, doesn't matter, but I'm talking about the team, but uh, those who are part of the retrospective, it's on them, on that room, on that cohort, to decide um, what will go public, what they want to share. And uh, this is how we actually achieve this um, psychological safety. And this is how we make sure that uh, things are not put under the carpet, because uh, if we strive for continuous improvement to, for uh, good quality uh, delivery products, then uh, we want to hear also the bad stuff. And we want to see if people are not happy, what bothers them, and uh, what are the issues. And they have to feel safe to share. But then they have to decide how I mean, there are definitely options and how everything can then surface out and uh, in a proper way be communicated. But one of the main rules I would cannot be stressed enough, I think, is that really what happens in retrospective should stay in retrospective. And yeah, I have some, from my experience, different actually um, uh, examples to share, but the one which was really extreme uh, was when the management or senior manager actually with the excuse of knowledge sharing uh, suggested now in this online world that retrospective is um, recorded, you know, like that people who are not there or other teams can listen to that and learn from that. This is, I can tell you, just crap because there, it just shows that there is no trust and uh, yeah, of course, we didn't do it. And also, uh, if those managers are serious about knowledge sharing, there are different ways how they can foster it, right? And uh, definitely retrospective is not one of the, of, of the tools. So yeah, I think this cannot be stressed enough. A bit of theory, and then I will also give a few examples. I thought I hope I'm not uh, speeding up because I thought I I would do it because I really don't want to keep, to keep you too long, and also I want to give uh, the floor for questions uh, that we discuss. Uh, how to make retrospective successful? Uh, there are different um, um, parameters or. Or, or dimensions, but I, I would like to reference uh, two, two books here. One, the first one uh, is here from uh, Norman Kert uh, called Project Retrospectives. And I, uh, on purpose, also have chosen this book for, for this audience at this talk, because it's quite, I think, old book, you know, from the begin beginning of 2000. And uh, it's actually talking about projects and it's um, nothing about Agile <laughs> in this book, but it's very much matching with uh, what Agile is uh, talking about and also what Diana Larson and Ersti, uh, Esther Derby told us about uh, good retrospectives, uh, which we are all probably now following. And um, yeah, I'm very happy that PMI is also uh, switching and uh, shifting towards um, incorporating agile mindset. Now what I learned from Boyo and, and Stanislav sessions, it's really good. Yeah, as probably you have read here, uh, there are few ideas that are suggested to be uh, really followed if we want to make sure that perspectives are successful and that they uh, bring us benefits that, that we expect from these rituals. So the one is actually 
really the need for ritual to make it formal because um, if people you know just dedicate five ten minutes uh, now and there for uh, gathering and telling okay this was good this was not good yeah we will do it next time better this is not retrospective of course and it's also important to make it formal to name the process that everyone understands and to make it really um, part of the corporate culture or the teamwork, you know, it's something which is happening uh, on a regular cadence. Okay, if we are talking about agile team, every iteration, but if we are talking about the project, then I don't know, you, you introduce milestones after each and every milestone that you have in your plan, when do you want to reflect and uh, to try to adjust and, and improve your process, but it should be named. Retrospective became um, very, I think it's, first of all, it's uh, self-explanatory, but it also became quite known to everyone in any uh, industry. But in different industries, uh, we call retrospective differently, right? Lessons learned, post-mortem, even PMI book long time ago uh, described uh, actually how we should reflect, right? So it's nothing new, I would say, but we should really name the process. Prime Directive. Uh, one of the also ideas that should be present is already mentioned and sometimes or quite often actually uh, maybe neglected uh, should be really present because uh, doesn't matter what happened and what is the topic or theme of our retrospective, everyone should feel uh, good and comfortable sharing even bad stuff, you know, that there is no blaming culture and then we should go to retrospective with the um, approach and attitude that all of us uh, did or try to do our best at given circumstances and uh, given environment and then constraints that we were facing. Uh, what is meant actually by the darker side of the retrospective is uh, that retrospectives many times can turn to compla a complaining field. And it's really tricky part because we are talking about uh, most of the time when we are reflecting, um, negative things are popping up, right? People want to ventilate, people want to uh, talk about the, the some mistakes or how to correct something. And then um, we, it's actually very important that we have a skilled facilitator to uh, recognize that and to steer the, the, the meeting and the event itself. So. Uh, from that perspective, uh, facilitator role uh, shouldn't be neglected. And if yeah, organizations think and managers think that anyone can do it, I really think it's a mistake that, that uh, it's, it's neglected. So if the benefit of uh, retrospective is to be achieved, facilitator role should be uh, really taken care of. And uh, from that perspective, uh, facilitation or the person doing the facilitation of retro should be really um, uh, able to, to uh, adapt to situation first, like to recognize what is bothering the group, what is bothering the team. If we are talking about the stable agile team and the, someone who is uh, part of the team, like scrum master or agile coach or other part or other team member uh, should be able to sense the 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 the, the atmosphere and uh, to steer the group and kind of suggest in what direction, but also should be able to recognize if it's a good time to discuss some things or not. On the other hand, uh, we as a facilitators of retrospective shouldn't force anything. Uh, we really have to make sure that everyone in the room is heard and that everyone um, speaks. But on the other hand, it's also tricky because we shouldn't force anyone. And we are supposed to make an uh, atmosphere uh, that uh, is stimulating that everyone then can talk and share their thoughts. Because normally those who are the most silent are actually probably the um, having the some root causes uh, why it's um, uh, some why some problems are 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 somewhere in in our work, not necessarily, but yeah, we should really pay attention to that. Yeah, and I will really not go in philosophical discussions about facilitation. It's a huge area for itself, as you all probably know. And project managers are, of course, <laughs> uh, needed to to be uh, great facilitators as well. But I just wanted to stress here that. 
uh, facilitation of retrospective is really important and shouldn't be um, put as a something, okay, it can be done. You can, you can just imagine if you don't have Una with us, how our uh, session or our conference today would look like uh, without proper facilitation. Oh, I again have issue with this. Thank you, someone stopped my sharing. I don't know why is this happening. Maybe, maybe Dario, you can share my screen then. Leila, we have issue because um, your presentation is only for Mac. Okay, then I will continue again. Oh, this is really bad something, but I hope this is, this will work now. Do you see my screen? Yes, we yes, see. Yes, cool, thanks. I, you know, to be honest, I see someone sh uh, someone uh, popping up, you know, like joining the room on, on uh, Zoom uh, gives me uh, info and then it, it blocks my screen. But okay, I will, I will, I will continue anyway. I, I'm close to, to finish my presentation. And just a bit of more um, theory, what I mentioned that um, this famous book actually from Diana Larson and um, Esther Derby about uh, making good teams great and actually how we do agile retrospectives. They suggest us and they taught us, I would say, that there are five stages of, of successful retrospectives. So we definitely um, should set the stage uh, as a facilitators or a retrospective has to have this introductory part where we aim that uh, give word to everyone and then everyone basically checks in. There are different techniques and how we can do it. And uh, they are really um, ice breaking and energizing, I would say set setting the stage. The second one would be to gather data and then teams and organizations, of course, have different um, sources and a lot of things in projects in teams to be uh, discussed. So it's really important to um, pick the, the, the right uh, data to uh, the topic to, uh, to choose a topic for the, for the retrospective. But also it can be general. Uh, in my experience, we had many times like just uh, really actually uh, defining the topic on, on the retrospective itself. Generating insight is uh, something which definitely shouldn't be skipped. And uh, this is the, the role of the facilitator to make um, team to uh, discuss and actually brainstorm on why and uh, try on themselves to find the appropriate solutions to the problems they have, even though if they are not in their power to be resolved, you know, but how they envision them. And probably uh, if teams and group of people uh, are uh, working on in the retro are uh, motivated and imaginative, they will have a lot of insights and a lot of uh, things how to, or proposals how to improve things. They definitely have to decide what to do because retro shouldn't be finished without concrete action items. And those action items uh, shouldn't be some wishful thinking, thinkings, like we will improve our um, sprint review next time. We, we should really have concrete um, small stuff that can be done by someone. We should have an accountable uh, person uh, dedicated to, to, to the thing uh, to be improved. And then of course we should close, close, the, close the retro and hopefully again with um, some kind of closing ground by everyone and that everyone can leave the, the, the retrospective with a clear picture uh, what has been discussed and what has been achieved. Una, how am I standing, standing with my time? We finished actually 15 minutes ago. But, <laughs> yeah, but, but I started 10 to, 10 to uh, 7, right? How many slides or minutes do you need? I think so. I, my, my slot is 45 minutes. I can talk two hours. <laughs> so I will, I will finish in, let's say, five. Okay. That would be great. Yeah, I really don't want to, yeah, to, to make philosophical discussions. That's why I wanted to check. I think it's really important. Uh, what I wanted basically to stress and open the floor for discussions, I hope we can dedicate at least a few minutes to hear your thoughts. Um, is it actually all what we, what we have shared, theoretical stuff? Uh, is it really easier said uh, than done? 
because we we all know a lot of stuff and we are professionals and working with teams but then how to really make it happen and then i actually uh extracted few things which i uh, thought or from my experience i think um, those who are working in retro should pay attention to so there are different um, anti-patterns that are happening happening all around uh, in every field of work. So that's also with, with, with the retros. And uh, from my perspective, um, definitely anti-pattern, which is very much present and affects the, be the beneficial um, impact of retro for the team and organization is if we don't dedicate time to reflect uh, and improve. So this uh, goes to the team, that team really should um, have buy-in, that they should understand what is the value of retrospective and uh, also for the organization to allow that because it's invest time is investment, right? And then they also organization has to pay for that. So they have to be willing to dedicate. So the time invested. And then also um, if the team itself doesn't see the value, then of course we have to, uh, as a coaches or, or uh, scrum masters or project managers have to uh, find a way how to coach them, teach them and um, show them the value. Uh, to, to uh, on on the concrete examples on their work, how how does it benefit benefit them? The other thing, what I mentioned, that uh, things that happened in retro uh, don't stay in retro. Uh, this is the worst thing that can happen. So it definitely uh, shows that there is no trust. And uh, if we want to have a team uh, talk openly, if we want to see uh, the communication flow between the teams and also management, then uh, trust should be there. And definitely uh, the, that uh, point should be respected that what really happens in retro stays in retro and the team decides what goes public and, and uh, then of course. And the third point is about, uh, about actions uh, from different angles. Uh, what I already touched that those uh, things that uh, are discussed in retro and agreed to be improved should be really concrete. Ideally something small, uh, something that uh, is already uh, in the next iteration or tomorrow in our work, part of our daily work. One of the main actually pitfalls is when uh, teams are keeping um, improvement backlogs or improvement lists and it never happens then. So that's why we really suggest and want to have those improvements uh, part of our daily work. So we discussed here in retro what we uh, recognize, what we want to improve. We said, okay, uh, Leila will create whatever tomorrow. And then we put it on our agenda for, if we are talking about Scrum team in our next sprint in the planning very same day. And then we have it in our agenda. I work on that. And in two weeks, when we are in retro or in review again, we revisit that if I did or not, if I had some obstacles and then it's not about me, but it's about the outcome what is achieved there. And also uh, following up on the previous action items, every retro basically should start with the follow up on the things that we discussed before and uh, how are we standing? Did we manage to, to um, resolve the stuff? Uh, did someone help us, help us or not? And uh, things like that. And also, of course, this is one of the tools um, which is um, used for communication with management, not recording retrospective and <laughs> sneaking around, but rather this, what is, what, is, um, what is found. And last but not least, uh, yeah, sometimes uh, it can be also funny uh, watching people uh, from the outside, maybe <laughs> watching people in the retro, because we tend to have different ways of engaging people, but it's really important. If we don't change techniques that we use in retrospective, they really become boring and not only boring, but they really become ineffective. So we don't get results. Depends what we want to um, retrospect on. Uh, we should be skilled to apply appropriate technique. Uh, I think you all can relate if we are talking about software development team or and a bunch of engineers around. Um, I, me being engineering myself, but probably I'm a typical one. Uh, but still, uh, it is really not common for those kind of colleagues to uh, very much express their emotions. But we want to get uh, understanding if they feel bad, uh, how they feel in environment in our environment. So we will for sure not ask in the retrospective how do you feel. But there are different techniques. Uh, how can we approach it? Either meds 
said Vlad or like disliked or many others. I can share the links uh, later on in chat uh, for those interested, and then you they are really free for using, and then you can you can use for for their for your work. You can approach me anytime, and we can also brainstorm on that. I just put a few uh, examples from my work with my recent team, uh, and I really want to stress that every um, good team, okay, here Agile, because I'm working currently with Agile teams, but I used to work with many project teams, um, always strive to become better. And then we really should try to help them with, with uh, effective retrospectives because they bring value to the team, but also to the organization and helping us uh, deliver better quality products. Thank you so much. And uh, instead of retros let's retrospect, Una, I hope you will give me a few minutes that uh, people ask some question. Yeah, I'm inviting them to pose any of the questions that they would like to be answered of, but um, I'm not seeing, so, or to, no, not me, I'm not raising hand. <laughs> uh, so is there anybody to want to, to discuss something or to pose the question? Now is the moment because the time is up, you know, and uh, we are aware uh, that that workshop was an experience. Uh, uh, so um, we are waiting for just like a few moments. Is maybe, there... maybe I can just then, um, before we close, maybe I can answer Dragan's question that he asked um, Stanislav, I think. So uh, how retrospectives are in these inter intercultural environments and, and the international environments. And I can really confirm that it, it really works and it's doable, but of course, uh, having in mind all that I mentioned, it has to be uh, taken into consideration. And currently the team I'm coaching uh, has uh, we counted six um, Nationality, nationalities or cultures, how, different cultures, how, I, how would I put it, you know? So it is really um, challenging, of course, but it also, if we, we, we can find a way how to, how to balance it and how to make a functional team out of that and really great team dynamics. Um, in the meantime, we got a question. Uh, how do you find balance between being empathetic on retrospective and let people blow out versus stopping them to do endless whining about problems and complaining and bringing negative energy? Yeah, it's, it's not easy. We, we as a facilitator shouldn't, shouldn't be uh, biased and shouldn't take uh, sides, right? But uh, I can share my experience, you know, and I, I am sometimes called like military scrum master. So I must say that I uh, really let people ventilate, but also try to point them out to our working agreement, to our um, code of conduct that we have on a team level. So that is, that is really why, uh, that's why it's important when we start retrospective, that we are all clear what is our, our goal to achieve here. So I let them, especially if the team is young and new, I let them ventilate, of course, because we are all actually, yeah, we love to be uh, heard. We actually, we need to be heard, I think. And it's really important. But then, yeah, sometimes uh, it's then okay. Sometimes I have to be strict, like you, Una. It's time's up. And then, guys, it's similar, like when you're doing as a master of ceremony, doing as a moderator on a panel discussion with 100 people in an audience, and then Everybody, like, they're not posing the questions, they're giving their opinions and comments, and it's taking, uh, taking a while. But um, it's, it's, it's a skill you learn. No, like. Yeah, I, I used to work at the radio station, as Una knows. <laughs> so I believe above all the skills, this also helps me in moderating, moderating the retrospective. So Aida says that we tried Starfish Retro Template this last sprint and it was a lot of fun. The team really enjoyed it. The only thing was that do less and stop doing it. Sections were empty. We used Miro board for it. Yeah, uh, to be honest, uh, depends either on the team, you know, I tend to, uh, if it's major team, and uh, if uh, they had fun in this, you know, the other part, uh, it's good, but then uh, for the teams, especially when things are tricky, I rather tend to use uh, some, um, how is it called, the simpler, simpler techniques, you know. Either what went well, what can be improved, or what can we uh, start, stop, continue doing, and, and that stuff. 
Uh, on the other hand, if even that they are reluctant to share, um, I tend to ask questions and even call everyone. So it's, um, but coming back again to the setting the stage, I always set the stage that everyone is open to talk and expected to talk. Everything stays in the retro and we have to uh, build, um, build that uh, trust and relationship. So, so far I worked with many teams, really international teams across the, our region, also here in Vienna. And um, I really keep my integrity. I never ever as a facilitator and scrum master let anyone uh, get access to what has been discussed. Only what we agreed in the team uh, that will be as an action item published on our uh, backlog or anywhere, uh, or even discussed on a board level, because uh, we have improvement backlogs on organizational level and things from the retros go there, uh, then it's it's there. So you should look for, for the reason why people actually are hesitating to, to give their, their, their proposals there, because I uh, actually highly doubt that they don't have ideas and that they are not aware what, what happened. But yeah, it can also happen. Uh, and we can always call them one by one, but it uh, sometimes can be tricky. But if there is a trust and if, if you set the stage at the beginning, I think it's also okay to call people to, to put, to, to put uh, stuff on, on in, that, in that areas. Okay, Leila, thank you very much. And uh, Dragon, thank you to, for your answer. Uh, You're welcome. Several afterwards so uh, thank you very much for your patience uh, people and uh, it was really uh, interesting experience for me too and I've learned a lot and I see that the trust is a word that's been used today uh, heavily and the teamwork of course so um, I believe that tomorrow we'll bring some other, another insights and other lectures that will inspire all of us and give some new skills and uh, knowledge for all of us to share among us and with our other team colleagues. So uh, thank you very much for being with us today and let us see you all tomorrow at uh, 2 p.m. So uh, have some nice rest uh, and lovely Friday and then uh, join us tomorrow at 2 and uh, see you.